So Revenge of the Nerds, for a lot of people, is one of the best, well, not say teen, but university comedies of the 1980s. It's gross. ton of money on DVD and at, at the box office. But there's some controversy in the movie that's still being dealt with. It only costs uh, $8 million to make. Uh, got five, uh, 500% more than that at the box office. But the... Um, the uh, Lewis and Gilbert and uh, uh, Poindexter, Booger, uh, Lamar. I met Lamar. Uh, I met uh, Larry B. Scott. Uh, talked about <coughs> how we've seen and influenced Javelin in Canada for many years. You got a big uh, uh, knock about that. But today we're not talking about the plot of the movie because we all know it. The, the nerds uh, stopped the university, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, jocks from taking over the campus and the Lambda Lambda the Lambdas went out. But the movie wa- itself was inspired by LE Magazine article titled Revenge of the Nerds that describes computer programmers gaining respect in Silicon Valley. Now Ted McGilley played a big role uh, in the movie and director Jeff Canoe were, needed somebody like him to be the lead jock. Now he saw him on the cover of Men of USA calendar and decided he was perfect for a role of the head of the Alpha Beta fraternity. And, of course, the great John Goodman was his coach and mentor in the movie. Now, Canoe also casts uh, the beautiful, beautifully handsome Matt Salinger as another Alpha Beta brother because he loved his father, J.D. Salinger's book, The Catcher in a Rye, so much. Now, the University of Arizona in Tucson was chosen to film many of the exterior scenes. Bill Varney, the university assistant VP for administrative services, approved filming, particularly after 20th Century Fox agreed to make a large donation to the university. Two weeks later... University administrators revoked permission to film on campus because of the uh, huh, plot. Dudley B. Woodward, University Vice President for Student Affairs, said the movie would not portray campus life in a representative way. Alan Beagle, Vice President of University uh, Relations, said there was nothing that would make them change their minds. After some negotiations, the university allowed filming on campus as long as the producers tried to schedule film shooting so as to not affect campus activities not film anything with a questionable nature regards to tastes and accept advice from fraternities. None of this happened. <laughs> film shooting on campus began in January 84. Now, the nerd's original residence, for which he also by Alpha Betas, was actually Cochise Hall. The subsequent residence was University of Arizona's Bear Down Gymnasium. The original Alpha Beta fraternity house that has burned down was filmed at the Alpha Gamma Rho fraternity house or University Boulevard. Now, casting for extras, especially for m- mean jocks, Sorry, the sisters and members of a black fraternity was held at the University of Arizona's Drama Building and at a Tucson Hilton Inn. Now, while working as a security guard during filming, an off duty police officer found a vial with a small amount of cocaine in the dressing room. The police decided not to pursue an investigation because it would be impossible to determine whose it was. Well, it might have been boogers, but I don't think Curtis Armstrong did drugs. Interior scenes were shot at old Tucson studios. Now, different sources give the budget between six and eight, uh, low for a feature film at that time. Now, according to producers Ted Field and Peter Samuelson, the two had a fight for the ending prep rally scene as others evolved in the production. One of the more cathartic ending where the nerds would get more violent revenge on the alpha betas, including destroying their house. Field and Samuelson further stated that the nerds' actions were inspired by Mahatma Gandhi's usage of passive resistance. Now, uh... Many, many great songs on the soundtrack, but these songs are not on the soundtrack officially. Burning Down a House by Talking Heads, uh, The Burning of the Building, a uh, trailer for the, uh, what do you call, uh, With the Moose and the tri and the We Are the Champions, the end scene by Queen, uh, which is, there's also an orchestra, uh, orchestrational uh, version. Uh, one of the strangest songs on the soundtrack is Are You Ready for the Sex Girls by the Gleaming Spires. Uh, probably, probably one of the biggest uh, terms. Now, not really well liked by the critics when it first came out. It was panned by many reviewers. The New York Times wrote, "Is the absence of general comedy that exposes the film's fundamental attitude of condensation and scorn towards blacks and women." Now, the Hollywood Reporter said, uh, "Nerds is primarily the story of outcasts getting their just rewards, and that is always a satisfying movie ingredient." Not, nonetheless, this, this scattergun, awful scatological film. Is filled with excessive racial stereotypes, which may offend some moviegoers. Well, not to me, because anybody can be a nerd. It doesn't mean gay, straight, blue, purple, whatever. Now, Kevin Thomas of the New York Times, LA Times, loved the movie, 
Following a delicious, gratifying underdog fantasy and a raunchy, uproarious satire set in the often cruel and inherently discriminating world of college fraternities and sororities. Now, Revenge of the Nerds was released on July 20, 84, some seven months after filming had started, although some theaters showed the movie a few days early as a sneak. It made $40 million. Now, released on DVD in 2007 and on Blu-ray on, uh, in 2014 by 20th Century, there's been different DVD versions released through the years with uh, additions and extra features. Now, the film holds a 71 critics approval rating on Rotten Tomatoes uh, based on 43 reviews. Now, only six reviewers uh, did it on Metacritic, uh, but Bravo has called it the 91st uh, overall funniest movie of all time. Now, due to the uh, influence of the film, a genuine Lambda 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 fraternity was founded at the University of Connecticut in 2006, and several chapters have launched. The tri Lambs, not an all black fraternity, is portrayed in the film, but open to all races and orientations, has six chapters in Connecticut, Maryland, New York, and Washington State. Now, the big controversy of the movie, of course, is the alleged rape by deception scene where, uh, uh, when Lewis uh, pretends to be uh, Ted McGinley's character in this, what he called this uh, moon the setting, uh, he keeps his mask on, makes love to her, and says, it's me. This was a sexual encounter with Betty. Now, commentators have looked at the film and considered some of the scenes, again, with this one, uh, again, uh, to be uh, uh, negative. In this case, to be raped by deception and a misogynist remnant of a male-dominated culture of that time. William Bradley of the Mary Sue stated after viewing the film again as an adult, he was immediately struck by the way the film plays sexual exploitation and assault for, for laughs. A Amy Benfer of Salon wrote that the Revenge of the Nerd scene and a similar scene in John Hughes' 16 Candles were evidence that at the time of these films, productions, people were stupid about day rape. And they're talking about uh, Farmer Ted having sex with uh, Michael... Schofling's uh, girlfriend in the movie while she was drunk. In an interview with GQ in 2019, director Canoe and writer Steve Zach Zacharias expressed their regret regarding the rape by deception scene, with Canoe stating, in a way it's not excusable, if it were my daughter, I probably wouldn't like it. Well, here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Clovis is in horseshoes at the time. That's, the, that's what draw the audience. Too many people on the internet now uh, making a weird claims, saying Blazing Saddles could be made, this could be made. It was of its time. There was no internet back then. There was no immediate gratification of insults and appropriate uh, language or appropriate decisions. Now, a remake of the original Revenge of the Nerds was slated for release in 2007. It filmed for two weeks, but filming was stopped because the uh, university decided not to continue filming uh, after he read the script. Uh, it was supposed to be moved to Agnes Scott College, but uh, again, uh, too small. It is highly unlikely, Fox said, that a remake we picked up in the future. The cast included Adam Brody, Dan Bird, Kate Cassidy, uh, Kristen Cavallari, Jenna Dewan, Chris Marquette, Ryan Pinkston, Efren Ramirez, and Nick uh, Zano. Now, Seth MacFarlane did announce his intentions to reboot the series on his Forza Door Productions for 20th Century Studios in December 2020 with Kenny and Keith Lucas to write and star in the film. Now, a pilot for the Revenge of the Nerds TV series directed by Peter Baldwin was produced in 91, but was never aired and was not picked up for a series. The aborted TV pilot was later included as a bonus in a DVD and Blu-ray release of the film. Now, in the mid-2000s, Armstrong and Carradine did get back together to, uh, to uh, promote the movie. He had devised an idea for a reality TV show based on the nerds competing against other and challenges inspired by Revenge of the Nerds. However, the idea was rejected at the time due to the competing Beauty and the Geek show. Six years later, Armstrong and Carradine shopped the idea around and were able to get the show greenlit on TBS in 2012. King of the Nerds ran for three seasons from 13 to 15 with Armstrong and Carradine hosting. Now, the, uh, the cast is a, a very interesting combination of veterans, up-and-coming stars, and what he called the 1980s uh, luminaries, including, uh, of course, Robert Carradine as Lewis, Anthony Edwards as Gilbert, Julia Montgomery as Betty, Timothy Busfield uh, before 30-something, before, uh, what do you call, Field of Dreams as Arnold Porndexter, but uh, the uh, Brian Tochi as to Toshiro Taka Ta Takahashi. I know it's a, it's a, it's a, it wasn't appropriate, but it was funny as hell, 
But Larry B. Scott as Labar Luttrell, uh, he had been, uh, he was in Karate Kid and Space Camp and all that. But when I met him, I found him to be one of the most dynamite, nicest people I ever met in my life. I went up to him gently and I said, I'm a sports editor from Canada. No one cared about Javelin until you arrived with that special throw. And like I said before, he was so thrilled to hear that. He said, well, wh he said, what do the kids do? Well, he said, we have this, these, all these track and field uh, events and we have the shot put down and everything else to hammer. But everybody loves the Javelin because, you know, that scene reminded a lot of people that you didn't have to be gay or straight to control the Javelin. He said that was one of my favorite movies, and I tend to agree. He was tremendous in this. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're having a, a long day, if you want a joke, put on Revenge of the Nerds, either on your streaming or your DVD. You'll be glad you did, because there's at least 75 good jokes in there that uh, every, <laughs> every time I, I hear an arm wrestling competition, I always wonder, what would what Booger think? Is that some... <laughs> anyway... Have a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Take care, and don't forget, Revenge of the Nerds, one of the best comedies of all time.